it's becoming increasingly apparent that we're in an age of insight powered by data. As such, the world is becoming more and more data-centric, with data acting as a currency. And there's a growing opinion advocating that data should no longer be treated as a cost, but instead an investment in new asset class called data, with value on our balance sheets. Well, to look at this in more detail, I spoke earlier to Dr. Inglim Go, who's Senior Vice President and Chief Technology Officer for Artificial Intelligence at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And I began by asking him to tell us a little bit about the reality of this opportunity. It's, uh, it's very real indeed, uh, Julia. You know, with uh, recently incorporated companies, startups, right? This is their norm. Yeah. Data is the source uh, of the machine learning to be artificially intelligent. Uh, in in the field of AI, for example, even uh, even with uh, companies that have been around for decades that we work with, they are they are going through a huge transformation, recognizing the value of data and what it can do for their companies currently and going off to the future. So it's very real indeed the opportunities. Yeah. OK, but what does intrigue me is whether we hold the right keys to unlock the value in this new asset. In other words, our data. Yeah, as you rightly pointed out, right? Um, you know, we are going as far as saying e even that uh, data should not be treated as cost anymore, but uh, an investment in a new asset class called data with, with value on the balance sheet. Now, when you say that, right, uh, that imme immediately puts pressure, right? An expectation for example, of the chief data officer that we must be working hard to extract value from this, this asset in our, on our balance sheet. So, so this, this, is, um, this is something that uh, is becoming an expectation now, right? Um, but it's, go it's, it's going to be hard work. The keys, have, as you have asked, uh, is, is, uh, is there, right? The right keys are there, but it is hard work to use them. Right? Um, because let's, let's, let's talk about those, uh, what, what the challenges are, right? Uh, that's related to this hard work. The current challenge. The current challenge, uh, you know, where we see working with customers are in, in three areas. The first one is data are mostly siloed. It is abundant, but it's mostly siloed, right? So uh, accessing them uh, is not as easy as it seems. So it requires hard work. I'll give you an example. We at HPE, you know, uh, you know, we have 15 data silos, right? Sales as a silo, marketing, finance, uh, manufacturing, global supply chain, and so on. These are all silos, right? And each silo owners rightfully have the re responsibility to their regulators to, to keep uh, the data in a certain, uh, to keep data private in a certain way. So we as a company need to go in right, to each of these silo owners, work with them as to what is allowed to be shared and what not, and then build a federation layer across all the silos. So it took us uh, years, right, a few years. And once we've done that, any new applications, analytics, AI, machine learning applications, can now pan, access data pan HPE. So there is a lot of hard work, right? Firstly, to federate the silos. So that's the first, uh, first challenge we had to overcome. The second one um, where we've worked with our customers on is many a times data is tough to get at. It is abundant, but it is tough to get at. Uh, I'll use the example of the May 6, uh, 2010 example where the stock market uh, uh, dropped a trillion dollars uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the span of tens of minutes, right? For months, we, we couldn't figure out what what went on, right? And, and this is not the only event. There were many of these uh, market swings. It was until one of the researchers at the US universities decided to go back to the raw data that they di discovered there was code stuffing, right? And, and why, why didn't we realize it earlier? Well, in the consolidated tape, which is the report, there was a stipulation that, uh, you know, all trades under 100 shares uh, need not be reported. Now, I, I fully respect re, uh, report uh, writers, right? I mean, you know, they have to stand up and take the responsibility of what goes in the report and whatnot. But you can see uh, that there are times where we just have to go back to the raw data. So it's all, it all, it's all tough work, yeah? Yeah. Tough and hard work uh, to, to use those keys that are available.
It's interesting, though, that you said that the data is tough to get at because the flip side of it is how do you go about collecting data strategically that benefits the future of an enterprise? And what types of data do you believe are, are actually worth collecting? That's a brilliant question, Julia. That's, that's, the, that's the big questions that uh, CDOs, CTOs, uh, CIOs, right? Um, working with their board of directors and CEOs have, have to contend with, right? You know, we, we know, you know, we, once you realize that data is going to be a valuable asset, right, for you going out in the future, moreover, your machine, the data is going to be the source of this, your machines learning to be AI, artificial intelligence going out to the future. What you collect today you know, can affect the competitiveness of your company in the future, right? Let me give you an example. There was one um, machinery, one of the world's largest machinery makers uh, that we work with, right, in Europe. They had the foresight, right, years ago to collect vibration data of all the machines they make. Gears, pump, rotating machines, right, gear pumps, uh, fans, and, uh, and, and motors, and so on, right. And, and what, they, what they do now with uh, all the collections, they, they collect data of the vibration of a machine that is working properly, vibration of the machine that, is, that needs maintenance, soon to need maintenance, and vibration of machines that are about to fail soon. Right? Now that they have profiled all that vibration data, today they have an automated way of predictive uh, maintenance and preemptive replacement. So that was foresight decades ago. Right now, what I'm saying now is that we need foresight going forward, right? And and rightfully, uh, it is the it is what you should be collecting, you know. When should you be organizing it? And where will your be your data? Where will your data be when you're collecting it and when you're storing it? My recommendation always is that try to afford to store as much as you can. After you spend so much energy resources collecting it, store it because you don't know what will be valuable going forward to the future. It is a brave new world and it's a fascinating future, but thank you so much for sharing that vision with us. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, Dr. Gold. Thank you.